migraines where he would pass out, he couldn't get up, he couldn't walk. It got so bad that he was in the hospital almost every other day. Um, so Dr. Pellows, I had him have uh, CT scans done, MRIs done, and unfortunately at that time he had Kaiser, and they told me it was his diet. The neurologist actually said if he doesn't wake up with a migraine, he doesn't have a tumor. Okay, so anyways, I gave Dr. Pallos. <laughs> so I gave Dr. Pallos the CT scans and the MRIs, and he took them to New York. And Dr. Moore looked at them, and he said, bring them here now. Um, we, we do th find things on them. So we flew to New York, and he was there for three days. And Dr. P Dr. Moore gave him an optimal dose of DHEA. And from that time forward, he has never had a migraine again. And he was 13 at the time, so it was 10 years ago. Uh, let me just tell you, his life was about over. It was that serious. It was really bad, where I was going to have to quit and stay home with him. So, he passed out, and he would stop breathing. You know, they had to call 911. Yeah, we took him to emergency. And, uh, yeah. So, so Dr. Pallas, that caused by brain swelling? Oh, I, I don't know. But Dr. Omura found a tumor. It was a tumor. So that, did they put pressure on the corpus callosum that can stop yeah. breathing? And yeah. So, so now he just graduated from the university, and he's at UC. Uh, yeah, so I'm at State University. Um, I don't speak. I'm uh, finishing up some uh, paralegal classes at UCI right now. Um, I'll be done on the 15th, but um, but yeah, no, I graduated with a criminology and criminal justice degree from Sonoma State, and uh, you know, I just kind of want to take the next few years to figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Cameron, do you remember that experience? How bad um, it was? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I don't know. I think it started around when I was like 12. Um, it, it was more like week, weekly, and then it just started to turn like daily, and then it got so bad to where I couldn't even go to school because uh, I'd be constantly like passing out, and then or just constantly just throwing up because of it. Um, in order to feel any relief, I had to uh, shut off all the lights and like be in like the darkest corner of the room to even like try and be able to go to sleep. Uh, what else? Oh, I mean, I think as soon as I took that first dose, I started to feel better, and yeah, I started enjoying myself in New York a lot. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I would say definitely um, life changing life changing experience. Kind of makes you realize what's uh, important in life, I guess. And uh, yeah. How often did you repeat the DHEA? Um, I think once, once, twice, twice. One, once a year, I think. Once a year? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He gets tested I don't... once a year, and I think he's had maybe another dose once or twice, and that's it. Yeah. Wow. And that this, uh... What was the doctors after you recovered? What did they say about your... Well, the doctors, when we... We never went back to those doctors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, they said I was depressed or something. And they gave me like uh, antidepressants. Yeah. I'm like, there's no and I made it. I made it worse. Yeah. They said it was. It must be his diet. No. Yeah. No. So Dr. Omer found the tumor and it was correct. Correct. Pressing on the brain scan. Correct. Yeah, I think it was two on my right side and one on my left. Yeah. Or it might be the opposite way around. I don't know. We have we have the X-ray somewhere. But one optimal dose of DHEA. One dose. At he that time, that was the best can. we knew. Yeah, he wasn't talking a lot. He just didn't want to do anything. So. Wow. Dr. Powell, did you say DHEA? DHEA. That was the best we knew. We would mention it, but it's now kind of in the dust compared to the D3 and the taurine and the PQQ. Yeah. So. Thank you very That's much. That's our story. Thank you.